Hey guys, Preeti here and recently I read this gorgeous version of Beauty and the Beast. This is actually the original by the French author whose name I don't even want to try and pronounce because that's not gonna work out. But it was so beautiful and it was the perfect timing because I just watched the live action version of the movie with Emma Watson and I loved it so so much and actually I want to watch it again now because it was really really good. Honestly, one of the biggest reasons I read this was because it looked beautiful and because the live action came out. This is actually the first time I've read the original Beauty and the Beast. Crazy, I know, I am a terrible, terrible human being, but it is very different from the Disney version we all know and love, which is surprising. Belle isn't as awesome as she is in the Disney version. Beast is totally different. His entire character is very different. The plot of the story is pretty darn different. I like the Disney version better, but this was very interesting and it's really gorgeous because inside there's just a whole bunch of weird stuff like this and then like you pull it and they're birds. And now there aren't birds. I know this is like probably, it is a kid's book. It's in like the kid's section of the library, which actually I don't understand because I don't think kids can like do delicate stuff like this, but it's so pretty. It's like the Harper Collins, yeah. Harper Collins version, so pretty. It's like canvassy and everything. It just feels nice. It feels nice on your hand. I love it. And it's pretty and pink. If you are interested in this, I will leave a link below in the description because it's so beautiful. I thought it'd be really fun to relate that book back to the actual live action movie and I know I haven't talked about it on this channel yet so I figured why not just do that in one go and talk about my favorite things from the live action movie. I think it'll be fun and if you haven't watched it yet, probably go do that before watching this if you don't want spoilers because there are some things that are different in the live action movie and I will be talking about some of them. So bye, bye, bye. I will see you after you watch the movie. It's really good, I promise you'll love it. Bye. For those of you guys who are still here and have watched the movie, I'm just going to list in completely random order because I'm too lazy to actually put it in order. Just my favorite scenes and things in general from the live action movie. So let's get into it. Okay, so obviously the Gaston song was one of the things I was most excited about because I saw it in the trailer and it, okay, that song is crazy fun and I was just so excited for it and it was beautiful. It came out so well in the live action and I loved it. I also really love that new song that the Beast sings. I think it's called Evermore. I'm not 100% sure on that. I wasn't really sure how I felt during the movie itself, although I know for a fact that I really, really loved it. But then I heard it again in Barnes & Noble one day when I was like studying during like a break between classes and oh my goodness, it's so beautiful, it's so beautiful. I love how they managed to make a song that just works so perfectly with the movie and also stands on its own really well also. Emma Watson as Belle, her reaction to the library is so much better than it could have been in anything, any movie, any imagination. It was so good because she was super excited when she was first shown it and then the beast talks to her and then the beast leaves and then she just like gives a little hop, skip, jump, squeal of excitement and I'm like, yes! When Lumiere and the entire gang fluff up the beast, make him take a bath and everything and then they put powder all over his face. <laughs> Wow. I love that one scene that was part of the Belle reprise where Belle just like ran onto the hill and like was spinning around and I loved it because it was so much like the sound of music. I know it's actually the same way in the animated version but I didn't notice it maybe because it was animated and I notice it now because it's like with actual people but I was just getting all the sound of music feels. When Gaston fell to his death, that was the absolute most beautiful moment ever. Sorry, not sorry. Beast and Belle's waltz during Tale as Oldest Time was the most perfect thing ever. The outfits and the music and the actual waltz and the expressions and, and the closeness and the memories. And I just really wanted to cry, but I couldn't because that would be really weird because my mom was sitting right next to me. Also, the BR guest song was so much fun to watch. I love the animations, the dance, like Lumiere's dancing. And also, I just found it really hilarious how Belle actually never got to eat any food because it kept moving. Just in general, Emma Watson's portrayal of Belle is perfect. Nobody, nobody ever can in the future play it better than Emma Watson because she is basically the real life version of Belle. She loves reading, she's a feminist. I love how she went out of her way to make it clear that Belle and Beast's romance was not at all due to Stockholm Syndrome. Like I never thought it was in the movie, not at all. In the book I'm actually not 100% sure that the book is weird book is weird but in the movie it's definitely not and I love that she took the time to like make it clear that she's gonna be argumentative as heck 
it's great that LeFou became a good guy because he's actually a really lovable character despite his weirdness and he didn't want to kill Belle's father unlike Gaston and I don't know I'm just happy he had a happy ending. The gigantic as heck snowball that Beast threw at Belle. What even the heck? That must have hurt so much. <laughs> I really like that scene where Belle like tied all of the cloths together and like threw it out the window so that she could climb down. I'm glad she attempted to escape. I think that was just really cool and like a cool scene to add because Belle is very resourceful and I'm glad that they incorporated that into how they shaped her character. I really 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 liked both of the dresses, the big dresses that Belle wore. The yellow super nice layery sparkly one and even the floral one at the end. They were just so pretty. This movie made everything so beautiful. I love it. I really appreciated the fact that both Belle and Beast got more extended backstories. We actually get to know more about them and why they are the way they are. Beast's backstory, I think, explains why he's not exactly the nicest person, the most considered person, why he grew up to be the person that rejected the fairy, rejected being kind. And Belle's story, I actually didn't really care like much about it at first, but then I thought about it and I'm like, Belle, I, I love that now you have an explanation for being so uppity. Like, I know she's not uppity. I don't think anyone except me thought that she was a bit uppity. Like, don't get me wrong, I love Belle, but that song, like the bell song, and she's like, I want more than this provincial life. And like, I get why, but also like sometimes I'm just like, you're such a, you're, you're a little snob. And like, she's not, it's just like, she's not. Like even I know that she's not, but it's just, it just happens. So I'm glad she has a reason. Like she has a legit reason. Her mom was from Paris. She originally lived in Paris and she imagined that it was like this cool big place, but she also lived in like a small place there too. And <sighs> It's not about where you live, it's about what you do with your life. And I really like that in this movie. Yay for fleshed out characters! Probably one of the best parts is actually this one theory I read online. So what happens in the movie is that it turns out that some of the villagers were actually married to some of the people who are turned into objects in Beast's castle. So people are like, this doesn't make sense. But then there was this one theory that basically said that when the fairy froze like time in Beast's castle and like made that into a time loop, sort of thing kind of. The village was also caught in that same spell and then Belle and her father came in after the spell started so they were not in the same time loop and I wouldn't have bought this theory except for the fact that in the song, in the Belle song, she's like every morning just the same. Oh my gosh, people are so smart. And that is everything I absolutely adored about this live action movie. It is so good if you haven't watched it and why are you watching this video if you haven't watched it? But if you haven't, you do want to go watch it. You really, really do. It's so beautiful. It will make you cry if you're a crier. I didn't cry. I might have cried if my mother wasn't sitting right next to me, but you never know. So this book, gorgeous. If you want it, get it down below in the description. Or like, check it out in your library. It's worth the read, especially if you haven't read Beauty and the Beast before. So love the movie, love this book. And that's basically all I have for today's video. So I hope you have a great day, guys. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to The Lone Reader. I make weird videos several times a week. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up as well if you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.